Hey guys, Danny from Your Guitar Academy and welcome back to the second lesson in Unit 2, otherwise known as Lesson 7. <laughs> and what we're going to be doing in this lesson is taking the fundamental groove that we learned from this kind of James Brown style track last time and now adding in some of the more subtle and defining features that make it classic funk. Okay, so we're talking specifically about semitone slides and knowing when to play out chords and how to bring them back in. So it, it's a really big lesson, this one. Loads of really important stuff that you can apply to all of your funk playing and, and even just anything beyond that, blues, soul, pop, whatever it is that you're playing, you can apply these techniques. So we'll go through it step by step, bit by bit, pick up your guitars and let's get started. Hey guys, if you've just joined us here on YouTube for this Funk Essentials quest, then please do go ahead and check out the website. It's all absolutely free. You get the full write-up, you get the tab, the chord diagrams, the scale diagrams, everything you need to get the most out of this course. As well as that, please do like and subscribe to us here on YouTube and leave us a comment. We make sure that we get back to every single one of you. All right then guys, so the, the part that we're really now gonna work on is the G9 part okay so this is the one chord so we're very much dealing with a one four five in the key of g so if i was in a typical bluesy kind of mindset we got a one a four and a five okay the only difference is that we don't have this typical bluesy 12 bar we're kind of just working with one chord at a time and we change when we change there's no specific structure there that was one of the big shifts between kind of funk music and soul funk and more bluesy kind of structures. Blues is pretty heavily structured most of the time, whereas the kind of soul, the funk was much more loose. You know, you could just, you're just jamming on it. You're just letting that jam go on and on and on. And when the change does come, it's massive. It sounds huge, okay? So the part we're working with here, I'm just gonna kind of play it through a cappella, so without the drums. And it sounds like this. more time. <laughs> Boom. Okay, so this part here, what are we trying to do? Let, let's go through it. So first thing you'll hopefully notice is I'm using the exact same strumming pattern that we learned last time. Same strumming pattern applies. We're now just adding in the chord movements. So what I'm doing, the first thing I'm doing is a chromatic semitone slide up. Okay, so this is a really cool technique that we can use all the time. If G is my target chord, I can use one single beat, uh, so in this case the one, to go from a semitone down, so essentially a G flat nine. Same chord, shape, just down one semitone, so one fret with every single finger, and we slide into the chord, okay? And first of all, in terms of the theory here, you know, you, on a chord chart, you wouldn't see G flat into G9, okay? You've just got to think of this as an embellishment of, of the G9. It's just the G9, it's just embellishing that chord and adding a little bit more tension, a little bit more funkiness. Think of that tension. You know, when it finally comes onto that G, it really resolves. So this, this is a classic movement that you're gonna see a lot of time. You can bring it in any way you like. When you're on it for such a short amount of time, so we're literally on it for one, so the one, and by the time we're on the E, so then literally the next beat along, literally the next 16th note along, you're already on the G9. So it's just a little bit of tension that we very quickly resolve, adds a little bit of spice to the game. Okay, so in terms of our the technique there, you know, whenever you do a slide with a whole chord, you've got to find a balance between strength, so pushing down on the chord, but not so much that you're stuck and you drag along. You kind of got to release the pressure just a little bit, not to the point where you lose the chord. You know, you don't want to go like that. That just won't work. You still got to keep the pressure down, but you, you want to just gradually find a balance between so much pressure that it's just not going to move and just enough pressure to hold the chord down and move it. Like that, okay? 
So, within the context of the strumming pattern, we're gonna go down, and then we get the slide kind of does the up for us. So we don't really need to hit that upstroke because the slide is, it's almost like a hammer on, right? You don't need to hit the, the plectrum on the upstroke of the hammer on, but it is officially an upstroke. And then we're gonna do the down up. One E and a, one E and a, one E and a, and so on. <laughs> so that's, that's your basic kind of first part of that groove. Okay. Okay, so the, the fiddly bit there is just getting that upstroke, that one E, but not hitting the strings. You don't need to hit the strings at all. Okay. Okay. So once we've got that bit, <laughs> which is the start, we're then gonna, remember if we come to the next part of the strumming pattern, so I'm gonna put it up on my screen here so I can see it nice and clearly. Um, but when we come to the next part of the strumming pattern, if you remember, we have this, there's and, and then three, okay. Now what we're gonna do there is we're gonna come back down a semitone. So it's gonna sound like this. Okay, so very, very similar thing. So this time, rather than the slide, all we're gonna do is simple, simple individual hits, okay? So it's the and, break, three. Now again, same theory, we're still just doing G9. On a chord chart, you would not see G flat nine, G9, okay? It's not, it's not a full blown movement to that chord, it's just using that chord as a tension before actually hitting the G9 again. You know, it's just, it's just an embellishment of that chord essentially. So our strumming pattern goes from being this to being this. Now that is cool, all right? Better than this. Both good, both usable, but I really love this sliding sound. Okay. And make sure to get those chakras in between. So one E and a two E and a three. Okay. So let's just get that little bit on loop there. Okay, so I'm just gonna get my drums back in. We're gonna go up to, just to get this bit right, we're gonna go up to 60 BPM. And it goes like this. All right, I'll do it again. Two, three, four. Pow! <laughs> Slide not included. You can tell it's late in the day on my filming schedule. <laughs> Crack. And hit. And there we have it. So that is the first part. So remember the, the strumming pattern, we've got two bars, haven't we? So that's bar number one. Bar number two goes like this, starts the same. But then we go like this, so I'll do that again. Um, okay, I'll do that again. So if you remember, we were doing this initially. Okay, now we're replacing that with the same slide as we did before, exactly the same as the first part of the previous bar. But then we're gonna go up a semitone. So we're gonna hit these two twice. So the G9 twice, down, down. Then we're gonna go up to a G sharp or an A flat nine, same chord shape again, and hit them like that, okay? So we get, okay? And this is the same concept as we just talked about, but now we're going above the chord to come back down, okay? And again, such a common move in funk. Uh, something you're gonna see a lot, and all it is, is totally out of the key. If you just played that, if I was jamming on like, if I get a little loop on here and I was jamming on like a funk. Mm -hmm. 
and I was jamming on a kind of like a you know and I do this groove all sounds very good doesn't it if I hang on either the G flat or the G sharp at any point too much or the G sharp it's too much but if you do it at very specific points and, and for a short amount of time okay <laughs> you can hear that it fits it's very much this idea of creating that tension the pull away from the home sound and then you're straight back to the pull sound, but uh, the home sound. But it's very much an embellishment of the chord. It's not an actual change of any harmony at this point. It's just embellishing the chord. So even if I was doing that and I was playing over the top of it, for example, so let me just lay down that little groove. Oh, I didn't record it. I'll do it again. Uh, So let's say I was doing that group, I could still play, you know, G minor over the top. Okay, you know, even when it goes to that G flat and I'm playing the G minor 9, because it's just an embellishment of the chord, it's just a, a fragment of time. All it does is create a more quirky sound for my lead. I don't have to suddenly think, oh, I've got to go to a G flat here. You know, it's not a chord change, is what I'm trying to get at. So, that's the progression. So that, let me just do that second half again, nice and clearly. Change my pickup. So that's the first half. Now notice that I'm creating this kind of James Brown style, stab, 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 stab. So I'm not going. Could do that, but I'm deliberately trying to do this stab, 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 this staccato kind of sound. And that's the part. Okay, so let's put that with the drum beat. We'll do the two bars, bar one and bar two, and we'll just get that on a loop at 60 BPM. Two, three, four. So that's the part we need to learn. And like I said at the start of this video, that goes on for quite some time, okay? So when you're playing over the track, um, I think it will probably be something like eight bars, 16, so eight times around. So it's 16 bars all in all, eight times around that loop, essentially. And as we go through that, we bring some trumpets in and things that classically happen in funk music. So it, the, the kind of fundamental set of the, the bass player, the drummer, and the guitar player, they groove on it. And you've got the other, the more kind of vocal instruments, although the guitar is also a great vocal instrument, back in that kind of James Brown era funk, it was much more used as a rhythmical stabbing kind of instrument like this. Um, it did have moments, of course, as, as, as you would expect, but quite often it was more about then the vocal, like being the kind of, the one that go in and out of it and, and create change. And, and also a brass section could bring in more melody, more, more ideas and, and unique sounds. So, we're here, our purpose for this unit is solid. We are, the, we are the groove machine, and that's what we're trying to get out of this. So, guys, what I highly recommend you do is you go through and you learn this exact groove, and you just get that over and over again. If you can get it to roughly 60 BPM really comfortably, then you're gonna be able to absolutely smash this. In the next lesson, we'll look at when we do finally go to the four chord. All right, that's it for me for this lesson, guys. If you want to head over to the next lesson, all you have to do is click here somewhere. And if you want to start from the beginning of the course, the full playlist is here. As well as that, please do like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. 
and leave us a comment. We love hearing from you guys. We love hearing how you're getting on, and we'll do our best to get back to every single comment or question that you guys have.